Welcome everyone to Hit the Books. I'm Thomas Casali with CC. CC, this is uh this is one of those crazy days of the year. It's the day after the Super Bowl. Some people think it should be a holiday, get us to get the day off. <laughs> How was your Super Bowl? Uh before we get into our college basketball bets and, and looking ahead, did you have a good day? Yeah, it was good. I uh, I bet the weird things in, in the NFL or like in the Super Bowl. So it was, it was a fun Super Bowl overall, the best halftime show I've ever watched uh, just due to the fact that I was able to make a little bit of money. So uh, it was fun. It's a good Super Bowl overall. Uh, There's some unfortunate events at the end, but overall a really good game. So uh, I, I was telling somebody the other day or earlier today, uh, today was the first hungover workout I've ever had. I've never, I've never enjoyed <laughs> alcohol enough to uh, have to work out intoxicated so today was the first and uh I, i'm reaping the benefits i'm hurting right now so uh, it, was, it was a good monday well let's get to what we do college basketball this hit the book segment on the hammer betting network is represented by presented by circus sports bet like the pros with the world's largest sports book right at your fingertips experience big gap bets with the highest betting limits better money line splits with the lowest hold percentage sports betting on the go has never been easier you can now download fund and bet like a pro from anywhere in nevada get your new bookie at circusports.com i'm sure they had a few bets uh yesterday um i know one the before we get into this you know one that always always laugh you know People got to stop betting defensive players to win MVPs and uh, Heisman trophies. They're, that's, they're 25 to 1. They're 20 to 1. There's no value there. All right. These guys aren't going to win the award. In the Super Bowl, they have their MVP votes in with like 10 minutes to go in the game. And they're always going to go, almost always going to go quarterback unless you get a weird situation. But that was one of the things I noticed because my man, uh, Hassan Reddick, he, he did not, uh, not make a play all night that, that I saw. But so, see, see here, it's, it's an interesting day. I, I always think this day is interesting because now today starts where we get a lot more college basketball experts roaming around. Football's over. Uh, people, listen, they have they have radio shows. They have content to do. So they're going to pivot to college basketball. How do you think that does that does that impact the market at all? Do you think with more people starting to get into college basketball uh, next couple of weeks? I mean, not in particular. I think more important is the fact that they have such a big sample size at this point. We're halfway through February, so I'm not too worried about uh, the people indulging in college basketball. Usually, the people smart enough can't get enough down uh, in basketball at open to to matter too much anyway. So uh, I'm not too worried about it. I just think it's funny to watch uh, the transition into. Everyone loving basketball, which is always a good thing. College basketball is the greatest sport there is. So uh, the more people, the better. And um, and enjoy what's coming as the greatest uh, tournament in all of sports in March Madness. Yeah, and if you're listening and you're just getting into college basketball, let us give you a, a tip that we've been talking about on this show the last couple of weeks. Tennessee is a bunch of frauds. We've been telling you, <laughs> everybody loves Tennessee every year, CC. The metrics love them. People on Twitter are telling me how great they are. But as we get into February and March, the Tennessee shine starts to go away. And we're seeing that again this year as they lose again at the buzzer this weekend to a surprising Missouri team. Yeah, the issue is um, on Wednesday they get Alabama, so it, it, they're going to open up favorites, and everybody's going to think something's weird. But at Tennessee, Bama off of a couple big games, it's it's a tough spot for Alabama overall. I wouldn't be surprised if you see a Tennessee outright to be Bama, and then people are back on the train. But uh, I I completely agree. We've talked about this plenty of times now. But um, Tennessee just they don't have it, and it was the the Missouri game was interesting. So like my biggest issue with Tennessee has always been uh, their lack of of true scorers just like uh, they don't have a go-to guy that was an 86 85 game like uh, their defense didn't really have much of their sleeve so it was an overall yeah. pretty bad Tennessee game but yeah no I do agree with you I like them Wednesday against Alabama that seems like a good spot to back the balls but long term again I just think they're a team that looks better on paper and they're not necessarily made to make a run in March one team we think I, I bet them uh, preseason before the season start, we think that can make a run in March is Baylor. Now they're they're really rounding in the form after starting off league play slowly. 
this is an interesting team because they have guards. We know that. They got guards who can play. They're a little light in the front court. But you like this team to make a to make a move in March and be a Final Four contender. Yeah, I think it's been, we, we've talked about them the last few shows, and uh, we had some pushback on the on the uh, socials for one of our, our statements. But uh, I, I think this Baylor team, uh, the market is, is adjusting, but they've won 9 of 10 at this point, and you can still get a really good future number. I think that when we talked about them two weeks ago, it was uh, 20, I think it was 22 to 1 still. Uh, it was on the show a few weeks back, and, and you still can get a 22 to 1 at DraftKings. Um, so I think, let's see, 20, yeah, 22 to 1 DraftKings. Uh, I think that's a really good number relative to how good this basketball team is. Uh, we saw in the TCU game, we've seen them play a battle-tested strength of schedule at this point. And um, though they have Kansas up, Kansas State, Texas, and they could get a couple more losses, I think it's time to hop on. I, I think that for the show, we need to hop on this Baylor team. We've talked good enough about them at this point. Uh, they have every piece that I think that you need in a, a team that's going to make a run. Their defense worries me, but... Uh, again, we've talked about that. The defense is worrying me against really quality opponents, so I'm not too stressed. Uh, and then at that two, 22 to one, I think it's time we hop on a uh, hop on a future there, Tom. Yeah, uh, we can do that on the show. I got them 16 to one before the season, um, so this is a little bit better number. So we can we can plug that in for the show. You know, it's interesting, CC, because I'm looking at. You know, a lot of people who might be getting into college basketball a little more. You know, Ken Palm is a popular site. I typically don't have too many disagreements with, with the Ken Palm rankings, um, you know, other than Iowa, who he likes to put in the top 10 every year. But the I'm looking at it. This kind of tells you what kind of year it is, because you look at the Ken Palm rankings. You know, he's got Tennessee at four. He's got Purdue at five. He's got UConn at six. Those are teams I don't necessarily love in the tournament. Now, Purdue has the most dominant player in college basketball. That can take him a long way. But I just think this, I mean, even he's got uh, Rutgers at 16. I mean, this just kind of shows, I think, that this is going to be a wide open NCAA tournament. Yeah, I completely agree. And uh, if you just kept going, one more number, St. Mary's at seven. And I know a lot yeah. of people are high on the St. Mary's team, but I just, and they're a good basketball team, don't get me wrong, but I don't think they have the intangibles to go insanely deep in March. They're, they're a slow-paced team uh, with a talent output that I just don't, I don't think makes it all the way. And if, if I'm wrong, then... That'll burn my futures for sure because I will not be taking a St. Mary's future by any means. Um, I, uh, it's been an interesting year. Like even a Texas team, Texas is eighth in the nation, and and they've had their battles and struggles literally all year, uh, and yet they're still eighth in the nation, which just shows how open this field is. I don't think uh, Alabama and Houston probably a top tier, um, and then under that tier two is wide open, and uh, I think that you can get a lot of value on some pretty good numbers in that tier two. Yeah, no, and I agree with you on St. Mary's. You know, I always try to look at a game like, you know, let, you take last night's Super Bowl. The Eagles led by 10 at halftime. I don't think the Eagles lost the game. I think the Chiefs won it. I think you got to give them a lot of credit for dominating in the trenches, for uh, injured Mahomes making play. So I don't look at that game and say, boy, the Eagles lost it. When I look at St. Mary's Gonzaga the last time they played, with all due respect to St. Mary's, I think Gonzaga lost that game more than St. Mary's won it. So I think they're a little bit overvalued off that win. Would you agree with that? Yeah, for sure. And uh, we got on the show after that game, and I, I said that uh, I felt pretty good about our, our spot with Gonzaga after that game. I, I wasn't too worried. They, they made mistakes uh, in a game that they, they should have won by a decent margin, um, and then instead they lost in overtime. So I, I wasn't worried about the outcome of that game. I think Gonzaga is still a pretty good team overall. Uh, they did worry me the other day in that uh, BYU game. They they ended up winning, but it, it was an ugly game. Needed free throws at the end. So Gonzaga's a weird one, but yeah, I agree. St. Mary's is a team that um, has shined a little bit more than I think they should probably shine. Yeah, and I mean, we, we have Gonzaga on the show. We have Baylor. But an interesting question here from Kyle Estrada. Any thoughts on Baylor 20-1 to 1 to be a number one seed in the NCAA tournament? Do you think they can get there? I don't. I, I I wasn't aware that you can bet that, um, but I don't. I don't think so. Just looking, just scrolling through. I've never even looked at this line, looked at the idea of this, uh, so I'm not entirely sure. I think they fit better as a two seed: Houston, Alabama, UCLA, uh, and then the four spot can kind of be tossed up to a lot of teams. I would imagine Purdue has to have pretty heavy say so as a one. Mm -hmm. um, if Texas wins through, you have to give Texas some thought. They're at 20-5 and five currently. So, uh, I don't know. Baylor, Baylor kind of started off the season a little 
lackadaisical Arizona. Oh, I think we see CC's frozen. All right. So, um, all right. I'll take over here, Kyle. Yeah. I think they're going to, I think they're a solid two. I think, you know, you know, in the NFL, when a team's not eliminated from the playoffs technically, and they give you the 75 scenarios that needs to happen for them to get a, to get in the playoff. That That's what I kind of think we're looking at with Baylor. They would need so many things to happen to get that one seed. That's why you're looking at them at 20 to one. Um, but yeah, I think a good solid two seed in the tournament, a, a team that can do some damage. And again, it's a team. There's two teams that I have futures on that I bet preseason: Baylor and Creighton. I'm looking in the matchups for the tournament that I I don't want to see a big strong front line against either of those teams because Baylor's a little small. Uh, Creighton only has you know Kalkbrenner and nobody really, no one else down low. And if he gets into foul trouble, I think they'll, they'll have issues. So with both my futures on those teams, I, I don't want to see like, even though I think they're a little bit overvalued Arizona, uh, you know, or, you know, a rugged kind of team like UConn who can pound you down low. I know Creighton just beat them, but that was a low scoring defensive slugfest where I, I think that's the kind of team that can bother Creighton and, Baylor. So I, I think it would be hard for them to get to the number one seed. But looking at a couple of these other teams here on, on Ken Palm, you know, that are interesting. The there's two teams I think have a little bit of value. You know, this I like I've been saying this for a while. I like UCLA. I think they can play multiple styles, they can do a lot of different things. Um, and it's just that's the type of team I think can can do can give a lot of different matchup problems to teams in the tournament. So I, I like them. Uh, their numbers shorten now. It's fourteen to one on Circa. Uh, they used to be around eighteen to one. I like that number a little better. But I think you know, listen, UConn still seventeen to one. I, the market loves UConn. They're in love with them. I don't really, you, you know, look. at The Circa's got a weird. They still have a weird number for where's Virginia. I'm trying to find Virginia here. I don't know where. Oh, there they are, 35 to 1. Last week, they were 39 to 1. That's a weird number. Uh, you know, UConn's at 17 to 1. Tennessee's at 16. Creighton's at 25. And there's Virginia hanging out there at 35 to 1. I typically don't like betting Virginia in the tournament. But when you look at this year, it, I mean, they have experience. They play defense. I think at 35 to 1, you're looking at a Virginia team that can do some damage in March. That's not a terrible bet. Um, still no CC here. The let me see. Uh UCLA. Yep. Uh Big Easy says UCLA, Virginia. Um, I agree with that. That those are two teams I think can do some damage. Um, let me see what we're doing here. What uh let's see what we got here. Okay, so CC is trying to get back on. Hey, looking at the Monday night games, the geez, I don't understand what again we mentioned this last week. There's no games on Monday night. I, there used to be a lot more games on Monday. I mean, it, do we really need 158 games on Saturday? It, it, I, I don't understand it. But you, looking at the Monday night slate, you know, you got North Carolina. This Miami team, I like Miami. They're getting five and a half. I think there's a little value there. I know North Carolina just won a game where a lot of people uh, were on the underdog Saturday with Clemson. They went and blew them out. But I think I, I have Miami personally rated a lot higher than Clemson. So I, I think the Canes getting the five and a half is worth a shot tonight. Um, hey, CC's back. We got him. <laughs> the y'all set, buddy. Yeah, I am. Uh, I'm using my phone's hotspot, so best of luck. But uh, our our Wi-Fi got shot down. There's a truck outside, uh, outage for the next hour. So I'm not even sure if you can hear me. Oh, okay, I can hear you. We were just. I was just going okay. through some Perfect. of the teams. Yeah, we were talking about. Remember last week, Circa had Virginia at 39 to one. They're still 35 to one. That's uh, you know, that's that's kind of a crazy number for Virginia when, when you look at some of the other lines. So we were just going over some teams that uh might be worth a shot in the futures market. 
Yeah, Virginia, uh, that Duke game was crazy. They're a talented basketball team overall, so uh, I, I don't hate Virginia by any means. Uh, if, if it sounds like I'm like cutting you off or something, I, I hear half of your sentences. I'm trying my best. Uh, we're doing what we can. But, uh, yeah, Virginia, that Duke game was crazy. If they would have lost that game, probably could have got a better number on Virginia. But uh, how it happened is all good, I guess. Well, in case we lose you again, let's let's go right to the play you have on Monday night, American and Bucknell. I'm seeing 130 and a half here at Circa. You like the under in this game. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not lying, Tom. I, you sound like a robot on my screen. I, uh, I don't got much noise. Okay, there we go. I, I, can, I can pick up what's going on if I can just see the screen. Yeah, so uh, I bet the American Bucknell under at 130 or 132 this morning. Uh, 130 and a half. Was it's plenty fine. I think this is a matchup of two teams that, that play very similar. This this Bucknell team has a seven foot center uh, that's going to be able to clog the paint. And American's best player, their primary driver of all offense, is their post to six nine. Uh, so it's just a, it's a matchup of do I think American has efficiency other than their post to be able to score? And I don't. American's one of the slowest teams in the nation. Uh, so I think you get a pretty good spot overall to take an under due to the fact that this game last matchup. Uh, sped up insanely so I think the the score of the last matchup was 78 71 on just some very high high volume shooting needing to regress some so uh, a 130 and a half I, I like the under there a decent amount uh, for tonight you're talking about an ugly slate so getting what we can there yeah, so that's under Bucknell and uh, American for CC the you know, we, we talked a little bit about North Carolina, Miami. There's only two other games, really, that are, you know, uh, that a lot of people know about. It's Texas, Texas Tech. Texas is three and a half on the road. Our Baylor team is at home against West Virginia, laying six and a half. You know, Baylor, their, their, their run here started with a win in Morgantown against West Virginia after they had lost those three games in a row. So they're at home tonight. That number is a little bit too high for me. I you know, I know Texas Tech is playing better recently, but I, I don't know. I think Texas matches up pretty well with them. I think that's an interesting game. I'd like to see Texas go out there and get that win on the road. Um, CC, if you can hear me, do you have any thoughts on either? Nope, he's gone. All right. <laughs> so uh, let's see here. So, yeah, I think uh, – I. so let me see. Oh, Dave L. says, any thoughts on Fordham to win the A-10 at 30-1? to 1? Now, see, the A-10 is interesting. I was going to talk about them for Wednesday because there's that that league is all over the place, right? I actually think Fordham is the, is uh, maybe be the best team in the league from what I've seen. Uh, they've played well every time I watched them. But that league is so weird. You're looking at teams like that came out, out of nowhere, like St. Joseph's and LaSalle are playing some of the best basketball in that league. You know, I had LaSalle on Saturday. Uh, I like both teams this Wednesday. LaSalle's at home could be a short dog against Richmond, who hasn't won a true road game all season. And St. Joe's is at Duquesne. They played earlier in the year. St. Joe's lost by 12 at home, 92 to 80. But uh, Duquesne spent a lot of time at the foul line in that game. And that's not typical because they don't shoot a ton of foul shots. So St. Joe's getting eight maybe at Duquesne. I like the way that team's playing. So St. Joe's, LaSalle, two teams that are playing well in the A-10. But I don't mind that Fordham bet because this league is, is a little bit topsy-turvy right now. Fordham is a team that had an easy schedule early and when they got in a conference play i faded them a couple times on the road not at home because they're much better there but they actually won those games outright so they've impressed me over the last couple weeks um i i think that that's that's a team that i like i like them duquesne obviously vcu but the, those teams have been very inconsistent in the a10 um so yeah so fordham 30 to 1 i, I don't hate it um, doesn't look like we're going to get CC back here. So I <laughs> looks like a one-man show today. I'll, I'll see what I can do. Uh, so, yeah, the Monday slate, eh, it, it's been eh all year. Uh, I, I don't know why. Uh, let's take a look at tomorrow's games. I know some of the some of the lines just dropped here when we were on the air. I'm going to stay in the A-10. UMass, a team that is not nearly as good as I thought they would be this year, um, has, has been struggling. But 
They're three and a half at home against Loyola. Loyola's played a little bit better recently, but they're terrible. They're terrible on the road. I think this line should be more around five points. So, again, A-10. I'm all A-10 this week. I got St. Joe's I like Wednesday. LaSalle I like Wednesday. I like I like this UMass team a little bit. I haven't had a, had a, had a lot of time to look at these lines, but I like UMass. The other game... You know, I had Illinois on Saturday. They ended up covering at home against Rutgers, but they needed a huge run in the second half. I still think this team is very inconsistent. Now they're going on the road, this young Illinois team playing a desperate, experienced Penn State team at home. Penn State's getting like a point and a half tomorrow. I kind of like Penn State a little bit in that spot. Uh, But to be honest, I kind of played the same spot on Sunday with Ohio State. And that didn't work out because the Buckeyes had 14 points at the half and an absolute embarrassment. Man, talk about two teams that need new head coaches, Ohio State and Michigan. Those two teams play with very little fire at all. So that's uh, those are two teams I'm just off of right now. But I think Penn State at home tomorrow um, is a good play. And then you're looking at Creighton and Providence. You know, my Creighton team, I wanted to see them against – UConn before I bought back into them. They played well. Uh, they got the win. Well, let me tell you, this is a bad spot. You know, they're coming off that emotional win against UConn. Now they're going on the road against Providence. I believe I saw two and a half was the opener on uh, on the game. Let me just double check. Yeah, Creighton's two and a half on the road. See, Creighton and Baylor are similar because they started out slowly during the season. So then you were starting to get some value on their numbers. Now it's going the other way again. Like Baylor six and a half at home against West Virginia. I think they win the game, but I'm not going to lay six and a half, seven points against a West Virginia team that plays hard. Uh, and then the same thing here. Creighton was getting a little bit of value on some of these numbers, but now they're going on the road. They're laying two and a half, three points to Providence. I, I like Providence a little bit in this spot. I haven't bet them much this year. The other game I'm looking at, I haven't pulled the trigger on it though, is Georgia is going to be, I haven't seen the opener on that yet, maybe around five against LSU. LSU is terrible. Uh, they're awful. Uh, they're just dreadful. And and I could see Georgia winning that game pretty easily at home. The game I really want to watch, I don't know if I'm going to take them yet. Oklahoma State's playing great basketball. That's a team whose offense was struggling earlier in the season, but they can really defend. Kansas is coming there. You know, I thought Kansas was in a good spot Saturday. A lot of the sharp betters liked Oklahoma. I think Oklahoma's done. Uh, I don't. There's nothing I like about that team. But you're looking at this Kansas team now, playing Oklahoma State, who's just rolling. And I'm going to be interested to see what that number is. I don't know if it's out yet anywhere. Uh, but the let me see. The I'm not seeing it up yet. See if we pop it up here on the screen. But Oklahoma State is 7-1 and one in their last eight, all right? They lost to Texas at Texas. They also lost to Texas at home. That's not a great matchup for them because Texas plays similar kind of ball pressure as Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State likes to steal, get out, get easy buckets. That's not always easy to do against Kansas, but I think their defense is good enough to keep them in the game. You know, Kansas doesn't really turn the ball over a ton, but... Oklahoma State, they 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 have some turnover issues too, and Kansas can create easy baskets themselves. This is a fascinating game. I want to watch this game for the future, and uh, as we go into the NCAA tournament and just kind of see where Oklahoma State fits in here. I think they're going to be if they get in. I think there's going to be some matchup problems they can they can create for teams. So that is an interesting game. And again, on Wednesday. I looked at. I already looked at a couple games. I like St. Joe's. I like LaSalle if I can get them as a slight underdog on Wednesday. And then there's that Alabama-Tennessee game. Now, I think I've bet Tennessee once all season. I'm not a Tennessee guy. I think their numbers are always inflated. They're always laying like 11 when I have them as like an eight, nine-point favorite. This would be the spot to take Tennessee. I think Alabama's good. But I think the SEC is so down this year that they're going on the road. Like Auburn, Auburn to me 
is a team. Uh, there's not really anything I like about Auburn. I don't think they're going to do anything. They got into the tournament, nothing. So I, I think this is going to be an interesting game. Alabama going on the road, um, facing a Tennessee. See, now here's my problem with Tennessee. Tennessee has a fake good defense. Like they're number one in Ken Palm, right? They do this stuff every year where they roll up these nice metrics against some against some of these teams. Um, and I'm not saying their defense is necessarily bad. I just think it's a little bit overvalued. You know, they, they played Arizona. They gave up 75. The, you know, they gave up 86 to Missouri. They gave, they gave, I just, last year in the tournament, right? They play an average Michigan team and they give up 70 plus points. This is where I think Tennessee is a little bit overvalued. And I think SEC defenses in general, are overvalued because a lot of these SEC teams don't shoot well from the outside. They're slashers. They, they they work in the paint. Then you go to the tournament and you're facing teams that are a little bit more flexible, uh, that can adapt to different situations. So that's where I think Tennessee struggles a little bit once they get out of the SEC. But this is going to be this is a good spot. I you know the you're looking at a Tennessee team that creates turnovers and Alabama's one weakness is they can get sloppy with the basketball. The, they can throw that ball around a little bit. And in Tennessee, that's kind of when the ball gets rolling a little bit. If they're creating turnovers, the defense is leading, is, is forcing steals that are leading to easy buckets, the crowd goes crazy. I think that's the path to victory for, for uh, Tennessee. And the other thing is this. Again, I think the metrics are a little bit, a little bit overrated for Tennessee, but they are the number one three-point defense in the country. And Alabama loves shooting threes, as we all know. They're 24th in three-point scoring rate. They're 11th in three-point attempts per game. And now you're going right into Tennessee's wheelhouse. I think this is a good spot. Uh, I like the card on Wednesday. I'm a pretty selective college basketball better, but... I got three games I kind of like on Wednesday. I, I got Tennessee. I got St. Joe's plus the points. I'm going to wait on that LaSalle. If I can get them like two plus two at home plus one, I think I'm going to go with LaSalle. Um, but that's kind of my card for the week. I know CC probably would have had some crazy totals on, you know, Alabama, A&M and, and all that stuff. But he, he's out of commission for the day. Let me just check out the – before we go, I'll just check out the Thursday slate, which is, you know, the Pac-10. I mean, Ohio State at Iowa. Uh, good luck betting Ohio State. Uh, uh, that team is just awful. Yeah, there's Thursday – the Thursday slates haven't been great this this season you know the 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 best games to be honest with you have been in conference usa uh i think that conference is more exciting than the pack the pack 12 right now uh oregon had a great spot at home i know a lot of sharp betters were on them saturday ucla took care of business there i just don't think oregon's very good uh, I, I think people want to believe that they're good and they're not so uh, the, the you're looking at this slate on thursday you know, you got Gonzaga against Loyola Marymount on the road. Uh, Ken Palm makes it six. That's about where it should be. I think they're starting to reel in those Gonzaga numbers, especially on the road a little bit because they haven't been covering. You know, I'll tell you what's uh, an interesting game uh, in, in Conference USA. This Southern Miss team, who I love, an absolutely red hot, won nine in a row. They beat a good Louisiana team on Thursday. They're playing South Alabama. On the road now, South Alabama has started started the year out slow. They've won four out of their last five. That they play Hartford um, tonight, though they should beat them handily. Uh, so they'll have five of their last six. They lost a close game at Troy. This can be a tricky spot for Southern Miss. Uh, I, I think South Alabama could end that win streak on Thursday. But those have been the games on Thursday that have been the most interesting to me, only because uh, I tell you why I don't know what the heck happened to UNC Wilmington. I bet them against Charleston the other night and they lost by forty. So, but they're on the road against Drexel. I would lean Wilmington there, but I, I got to dive more into that game because they're just they're not the same team they were earlier in the year. And then you got Utah going to Arizona. Uh, just not a great card. Purdue at Maryland. Purdue's a one play. Purdue will slam them. 
that that's a good spot for Purdue. Purdue, they'll, they'll, they'll win that game at Maryland. Maryland, I don't think Maryland can beat the the, the elite teams in the country. Um, and they've played some of them at home. They played UCLA at home. They got smashed. Uh, you know, a lot of their a lot of their losses are on the road. I wasn't really impressed with Maryland against Penn State on Saturday. I think that's a good spot for Purdue. A, a low, a real low spread. I think they'll take care of business. Um, but yeah, sorry, sorry, CC didn't make the cut <laughs> this week. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll try to get we'll try to get the the team the band back together next Monday night. Uh, but thanks for sticking around and listening to my babble. I appreciate it. Uh, got some picks this week. Uh, not I don't really have anything on Monday. Like I said, I would lean Miami plus the points. I know North Carolina looked good against Clemson, but I think that's a better matchup for them. I think Miami's guards can give the Tar Heels trouble. So that plus five and a half, plus six, if you can get it on the Canes, maybe a Miami team total over too is something. This is a high total. I don't know if either team can stop the other one. So Miami team total over is also worth a look. But thank you for watching. Hit the books on the Hammer Betting Network presented by Circus Sports. Bet like the pros, the world's largest sports book right at your fingertips. Circus Sports experience big at bets, better money line splits, and the best customer service. Download your new bookie today at circusports.com. And hey, Tune in next Monday. We're getting close. We're getting close. Selection Sunday's around the corner. It's college basketball season now, baby. So next Monday, hopefully CC will be back with us. Thomas Casali for my man CC. Thank you for watching. Hit the books.